hey guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to show you how you can make the post api call with the retrofit so in this video i'm going to show you with the help of view model how can we make a retrofit api call for the post so let's begin by adding the dependencies so i have already copied some dependency we need to put it inside the build.gradle file so let me paste these dependencies here and we need to add this uh, plugin so let me copy that plugin as well and add it inside the plugin block. And this is the URL we'll be making the API call. And let's sync our project. And meantime, we'll check. So this is the URL where we need to create an account and get the API access token, which we need to pass. And before that, let me show you the dependencies we have added. So this is the retrofit too, and this is the converter JSON, and this is for the view model lifecycle extension, and then the login interceptor. I'll show you why we are using login interceptor with the retrofit. So this is just to print the logs. So let me create a package or a class. So in this class, we'll be having the retrofit instance. So I'm creating a companion object. And inside this block, I'm creating a separate function which will return the retrofit instance. And here we'll be returning the retrofit.builder dot base URL. And here we need a URL, right? So let me create a separate variable base url and it's going to be this part of the url till here copy it and put it inside the double quotes and here we need to add public api slash and let me show you so this is the url and we need to add slash users now we can get the phase one data. So this is the whole URL we need to hit. We'll pass this base URL. And then I'll, we'll add the converter factory. The second dependency we added, json.converterfactory.create. And then we'll call the build function. And I show you why we added the interceptor dependency so here i'm creating an instance of http logging interceptor and the logging type logging level is body so http logging interceptor dot level dot body and then i need to create a client that is ok http client dot builder in the client dot builder and then we'll pass client dot add interceptor and we'll pass the http logging interceptor object here and then we'll add this client inside our retrofit dot build so this way we'll be able to print all the logs on our log cat i'll show you now we need to create an interface that is our retro interface retro service interface and here we need to define a function and its method type so this function needs some parameters like a body parameter when we make a post api call so we need to pass some parameters so that will be the user object i'll create this user object data class later but before that let me mark this function as the post and we'll pass the part of the url that is the this part and with this api we need to pass some headers so this is this is the way we can pass some headers to the retrofit so there are a couple of headers we need to pass here by comma separated value so one is accept one is content type 
and third one is the authorization bearer that is the access token which i show you at the starting of the video so this one will pass it here now let's create a data class and we'll give the name as user and we'll define some variables so one variable is the string name email status gender so these four four five parameter we need to pass while we'll be making the post api call So this is the object, this is the object, this type of the object we need to pass. So we'll use this user object and pass it here and then it will return call inside the brackets. It will be the return type of the object. So we need another data class so with the, some parameters, the response data class which will be holding these variables. So one is code, then meta, and then data. So we'll define that class inside the user class itself. So we'll give it as name, user response. That is code, meta, and data. And data class will be as a user type object. Asset. We'll use the same user response class here. So our retro service interface is also ready now. So it's time to see what's why it's showing the error. Okay, so comma is missing here. Let's add it. So it's time to create another class that is going to be our view model. So as I said, we'll be here implementing the view model. With the help of view model, we'll be making the API call. So inside the init block, we need to define a live data, mutable live data. On that, we'll be uh, observing this data. We'll be put some observer inside our main activity. We'll initialize this inside the init block. And then I'll be creating a function which will return this live data. And another function which is like just create user, create new user function that will be taking a object of user. And then we'll initialize, uh, then we'll be getting the instance of a retrofit. Then we'll call call.nq. It will be having some callback of res user response type. And that import should be retrofit. And we'll override these two function on failure and on response. 
now we'll send the we'll call the post value with the null if it is failure and if it is success let's check the response dot is successful if it is success then we'll return the response if it is failure then we'll simply call null and we'll call response dot body our view model is also ready now so let's jump to our main activity and start with the layout so i'm simply adding to added text on top that is for one for the first name or, or sorry the name and second one is for the email I'll copy and paste the same. Let's just change something. And simply adding a button under the second added text. now this create button button create will be uh, handling its uh, click listener and we'll create a separate function create user that function we need to call from button click and here we'll be inside this function we'll first of all build the user object and user object first parameter is the id uh, second parameter is the name so we'll uh, not pass anything we'll passing the empty and second parameter will keep it as the value what user has input third is the email let's copy the same id and fourth parameter is the status that is the active i'm hard coding this status and the last is the gender that is male so those two values i'm currently hard coding you can if you want you can make it dynamic from the input inside the layout file and now we need to initialize our uh, view model so i'm creating a separate function to initialize my view model Here I'll uh, I'll be checking the null because we are passing null from the on our live data. So if it is null, then that means it's a failure. The API is failed. In that case, we'll be calling the toast message and we'll show a message failed to create a user. And in case of success. We'll be using the same toast 
but will change the message successfully created user we will call this will define this view model as the global because we need to call this view model in the different function as well so let me remove it from here and use create user and we'll pass this user object and the last step before we run our application so we need to add the internet permission network permission inside our manifest file so let me close few files which you don't need and yes so let's run our application and see how it look like so it successfully launched let me enter the name i'm adding some name anything we can add i'm giving something unique so that we can identify it later so xxx aabbb at the red gmail.com and let me click on create user and you see the toast here successfully created user so user has successfully created so let me show you let's run this our log cat so in our log cat we added the logging so you see here we got the 200 this is the post api call we made this is the url here is the headers we added here is the request we just sent and here is the response code 200 and here is the response so code 200 201 meta null data is the user object we define as so i'll use this uh, user id you know my next video just to show you the patch or i can say the edit so guys thank you so much for watching if you have any question you can ask me in the comment section thank you